We're both we're all checking our phones to see if it's actually true. Can somebody give us a hi if we are live? I never trust these. Oh, it's I got it on my phone. It says we are live. Okay. There you go. There we yeah, are. We are. We are live. Hey guys, how are you? Hello. Hi, hi, hi. So we'll give everybody a couple of minutes to log on. Um, but I guess, okay, so I'm trying to figure out, I guess, Meredith, you're in the middle and Sarah Beth, you're on the end. Yeah. So how about, let's do this. Um, as everybody's coming on, you guys, um, we can read your comments. So please give us a hi and hello. Hi, Lindsay. Um, tell us where you're coming from, all that good stuff. And Meredith and Sarah Beth, why don't you guys introduce yourself so that everybody knows which block you're in? <laughs> Okay. Meredith, why don't you start us? Okay. Hi, um, I'm Meredith Murphy. I am a fourth year senior at UVA. Um, I am from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm majoring in psychology, and I hope to go on to nursing school in the next year. Hey. Are you Sarah Beth? Um, I'm Sarah Beth. I'm a senior at Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm majoring in uh, social work with a minor in psychology. And next month, wow, that's weird, that's next month, um, I'll be going to grad school at UNC Chapel Hill um, to get my master's in social work. That is amazing. So we're so excited to have them. Um, I'm McCall Dempsey with the Alliance, founder and director of Southern Smash, and I had the pleasure of meeting these two girls. How long ago did we meet? I feel like it's I feel like it's been virtual. Yeah, we person. met the first time like two years ago, I think. It was our sophomore year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gotten to know them. Um, oh, there's. So, so yeah, so as people are coming on, they're saying hi, and um, we're excited because tonight we're going to talk about, sadly, how this COVID-19 has just really thrown a wrench in a lot of our plans, but for you two and so many others, it has been just really sucky because y'all are going to miss your senior graduations from college, and I think the... Um, um, Hi, Stephanie. And look, somebody's telling you hi, Sarah Beth. I love like popping on. <laughs> um, but I would think so. Why don't Sarah Beth tell us what kind of experience you two already have with missing out on these amazing um, milestone markers and celebrations? Yeah. So me and Meredith, we met in treatment um, back during our senior year in high school. We both went um may of our senior year which was 2016 um and so we both got to go to our senior proms and those kinds of activities but that last month of senior year we missed basically every event that there was um i spent my graduation at a bowling alley for one of our outings um so i did not get to graduate. Your outing um, your treatment. yeah <laughs> yes one of my treatment outings we went bowling um, so that's where I was when my graduation was happening back in Knoxville. Um, so yeah, so having mi now missing my college graduation is a really big disappointment because I think it held a lot more meaning this time around just because I didn't have that experience the first time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what do you all think? I mean, as so many folks are kind of experiencing the same feeling that you've already once experienced and sadly now you guys are experiencing again. Um, what thoughts maybe do you have for folks dealing with the grief and the loss of such a really big important milestone in their life? Meredith, do you want to share? Oh, um, something that has really uh, been helping me is um, you know, like in the eating disorder community, we're all united because we all struggled with eating disorders or struggle with eating disorders. Um, and so I kind of am feeling that way with this, but more so like united with everyone, you know, because I feel like there are so, I mean, pretty much every human is 
really impacted by COVID-19. And um, a lot of people, you know, are dealing with like can't, having to cancel their wedding and then like college and high school, middle school graduations, um, you know, big projects and conferences, things that people put a lot of work into, they're having to miss. And so I've like found a lot of peace in that. Like I like, just kind of feel more connected to like other people, just every body who's going um, through this. And so I found, yeah, like, like I said, I found a lot of peace in knowing that like, um, I'm not the, um, I'm not the only one going through this. And, you know, there are a lot of us who are struggling or dealing with this. How are you kind of coping with it, Sarah Beth? Um, I'm definitely letting myself feel the feels. Um, I think I wrestled with some guilt about being upset about it. Um, just because obviously the COVID-19 is causing a lot more mayhem in the world right now than just canceled events. Um, so part of me has felt guilty being like, okay, I'm missing my graduation, but people are actually dying from this and getting sick. Um, so I struggle with that a little bit, but then I realized that, yes, those big things are happening, but these milestones in our lives are also big. Um, and then it's important to be able to grieve those things. Um, even in the grand scheme of things, they might not be huge. Um, they're not gonna be in a textbook 30 years from now, but like in our lives, we're gonna look back and remember like, oh yeah, I missed out on this event. So I think definitely how I'm coping with that is just letting myself be sad talking with friends like Meredith and my other friends from school and my cohort about how disappointing that is. Um, but then also just looking forward to like the things that are going to happen. So I know that I'm looking forward to hopefully my grad school graduation, assuming nothing else happens. Not another um, pandemic. <laughs> yes, fingers crossed this does not happen again. Um, so I think just like looking forward to the things that are gonna happen that I know are gonna be constant is really helpful, but also just allowing myself to be disappointed. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you're talking about is so important and something that we learn in our eating disorder recovery and hello, Mary Frances and Sam. Um, but I, I, I do, you know, and it, we collectively have the same best friend, Brene Brown. And as we know, <laughs> she said that things can be both right. And we can acknowledge that, we are so damn pissed that our graduations and these milestones, I'm pissed I'm now a teacher, you know, all of the things that are happening, that you know, it's yeah. not that hard for me to stay in and do this and suck it up because it is also taking away lives. I mean, it's a serious disease. There can be both. And, you know, uh, like again, like our bestie Brene says, like, compassion is not finite. Like we can have compassion for ourselves and for others and missing out on these things. And we can also have compassion for those who are truly losing loved ones and whatnot. And, you know, I think that's so important. And, and Meredith, back to your point about, you know, this has been you're leaning on folks within our eating disorder community and Sarah Beth, you within, you're, we're all experiencing the same things. And I was watching Again, our other best friend, Glennon. Um, Glennon has our Glennon Doyle. Um, if you don't watch her morning family meetings, we're going to have to not be friends. But Glennon, this morning, I think it was this morning's family meeting, literally I watched it right before this, and she was talking about the feeling of relief she felt when she went to a mental hospital in high school. Because for the first time she just stopped pretending. And it's so true that, you know, and we, the three of us have experienced it throughout our, I mean, we all went to Carolina House throughout our time in treatment, that we got to just be broken and show up broken. And I think now it's really cool because now we're seeing everyone's brokenness, albeit virtually or six feet away, but <laughs> everyone gets to be disappointed together. And I feel like there's some healing within that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I feel like, I mean, for me specifically, the first time around, I was kind of alone in the whole missing my high school graduation, like all my friends right. were at their graduation, and it was very much an isolated thing. Um, but now it's literally every senior in the world is experiencing it. And so just knowing that you're not alone in it is so helpful. And I think that's something that I hope people can carry 
maybe if it's not, you know, I mean, we've all experienced that within our eating disorder recovery, but you know, if they're experiencing it for the first time, I hope they can kind of carry that on. What do you guys think about like, how could we celebrate you all or how can you celebrate, like give some ideas, like what would feel right? Like a, you know, especially for maybe even a high schooler, like, I mean, I didn't have a college graduation. I graduated in December. They didn't do December graduations. Um, so it's kind of like I took my last exam and I was like, woo -hoo. Um, <laughs> yeah, peace. Um, hottie toddy. But what can you, <laughs> you know, maybe some fun, like creative ideas that we could do for each other. Like if we have a loved one that we know that's graduating high school or you guys, like what can we do to support you and make you feel a little special? So I know for Sarah Beth, we, um, <laughs> had a little, pseudo graduation um in the carolina house living room uh, so i think we made did we make you a cap i think so uh we made me a diploma uh, i don't remember about I, remember I wore my kitchen the paper. hat for the cap yes yes yeah. um what hat did you wear the hats that we wore in the kitchen oh <laughs> your internet um, yes. and so, and then I, so kind of uh, going backwards, I did wow. go to my graduation, um, but it was by no means a normal yeah. graduation day. Um, my dad um, spent the night in a hotel down the street from Carolina house. He picked me up at 6.30 in the morning. He, um, uh, we drove to Richmond. I graduated. We had a, a little like luncheon and then I had to be back at Carolina house at like four. Um, yeah. and so it definitely like looked a lot different, um, than what I had imagined. And so, um, my family really like, um, we really like focused on like the part that like I was there for. And, um, you know, we still made like a really big deal about it. And so I feel like, you know, with this, um, even though we're not physically like walking across the stage, like we can still, you know, like, post on Facebook, like, congratulations, you graduated college or high school. And, um, you know, still treat it, treat the day as like a very like special sentimental day, even though we're not physically, um, you know, at our respective colleges or high schools graduating. I think that's, those are great ideas. And, and you know, any way you can market for someone, whether it's sending them a little happy, it doesn't have to be anything big or expensive, but just letting people know and, you know, I had my high school graduation and I went through college and I did all of these milestones, but I did them like in the depths of an eating disorder. So I never wholeheartedly experienced a lot of those things. Um, and I, I had to grieve throughout my recovery process that. And so I just want to let people know, just like you guys are saying, like, give yourself that space to, and, um, you know, six feet away from somebody, but <laughs> shifting gears a little bit, how are you two doing practicing self care in this really kind of isolating time? I know you're still in your apartment in Nashville and Meredith, you're with your parents in Richmond, but still it's not, it's not the same as what you should be doing, which is in college with all your friends prepping for graduation. So how are y'all handling kind of self care and recovery? Yeah. Um, well, I've been FaceTiming a lot of friends. Like my friend Aubrey just commented and joined us. I've been FaceTiming Aubrey a lot. Um, we go to school together. So we definitely are grieving the whole graduation thing together. Um, so definitely staying connected with people virtually, um, as well as playing with my puppy. Um, really, I've been doing a ton of art. That's like really something how I um, express how I'm feeling and just cope and just de-stress. So I've been doing a lot of stuff like that. And stay tuned for Sarah Beth's amazing Alliance Southern Smash stickers coming to you soon. They're so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm also trying to stay off media um, or stay off social media, stay off news, websites, stuff like that. Um, trying to stay informed, but also not be obsessed about it and like dwell in what's happening. Um, so really just trying to stay present in what is happening in my tiny little apartment. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Mary? Um, so school is still like in full swing. Um, and I, so I've been um, like trying to make some structure. I, I do really well with like a schedule. Um, so 
I've been trying to like have a schedule and stick to it um, to make it as like normal as possible. Um, and then also um, puzzles. I really, really like doing puzzles. Um, it's really great. Um, and you know, like finding shows on Netflix that I probably like wouldn't have had time otherwise to um, watch or to, yeah, to watch. Um, and then like reading books, I have like a whole like shelf of books that I haven't been able to read. And now I'm just slowly getting through those. Um, and yeah, also like learning new things. I bought like a embroidery hoop. Um, um and so I'm gonna like try and learn how to do that. Um, so yeah, that just like having um, a new creative outlet, I feel like will be really good. Yeah. I think there's one thing that recovery can kind of teach us is like that. Dad's comment. Yeah. Um, what did it? What did Dad say? Dad Clean your bed. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Exactly. Uh, exactly. No, I I think for I mean. Creative outlets are huge within the recovery process. And I think that whether or not you have an eating disorder or not, now is a fantastic time to find your creative outlet and get super creative with it. And I love the embroidery hoop, Meredith. That's such a good idea. Um, how are you guys, and, and or what are your thoughts, I guess, on, I am tired of seeing the memes and the gifts and all the things about weight gain during, you know, oh, I'm five pounds away from my quarantine 15. I'm like, over it what what are a what are your thoughts on it and b what is what is your advice as is to people in recovery on how to kind of handle seeing that yeah um me and meredith were talking about this yesterday but i think it's really disappointing that we're in an actual global pandemic and people are still um worrying about gaining weight from being quarantined in their house. Like we have a lot bigger things happening in the world right now than worrying about our bodies. Um, but that also just goes to show how disordered our world is and how like body focused our world is. Um, but I think for me, I, like I said, I've been trying to stay off social media. It's really, um, I am really careful about who I follow and what I follow. So if I see that I'm following a page on Instagram that is constantly sharing um, weight loss tips, uh, workout regimens for losing weight during the quarantine or keeping the quarantine 15 off or whatever the term is, um, I typically unfollow those pages or at least mute them so I don't see them on my feed. Um, so I am really exclusive about who I follow just so I'm not feeding into that negative energy um, that might not be negative for some but for me in my personal journey recovery it is um, and so I think definitely staying off some social media or being careful about who you follow on social media is yeah. important um, yeah yeah How about you, Meredith? I um, have noticed that these influencers they think they have uh, an, a degree in um, dietetics shopping yep. um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have um, unfollowed a lot of them because like you said, they, I mean, it's like they're like fashion influencers, but they've come out and now they're sharing their, all these they're professionals and, and, you know, nutrition all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh yeah. They got their dietetics degree. They got their exercise science degree. And now they're all the degrees. Yeah. Yep. It's, yep. it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so proud of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> um I yeah definitely unfollowing um those people um and then something that has like really really helped me um just like throughout the my few years of recovery um a girl in treatment said this to me and it is just like always stuck um when we are like bombarded with diet talk or, and there are people around us talking about their their new diet um something that she said was you know they can do that and they won't like develop an eating disorder it won't like completely veer uh, their life won't completely like, go off the tracks but if i did that it would completely it would flip my life upside down not yeah. in a good way um and you know i would just take that if I started a diet, if I gave into their diet, 
um, whatever diet they're talking about, I would relapse into an eating disorder. And so that was like a really good perspective is like, they can do that. And I hate that they're doing that. I hate that they like haven't found freedom from diet culture. Um, but I can't do that because I will relapse into my eating disorder. Um, so that's something that I've always like had to think of. Um, and, um, and so, but other like practical ways, you know, we have the, like, um, the, um, you know, like walk away from yeah. a conversation that has to do with diet talk or like, um, which I guess like in quarantine, it would be like, <laughs> room, <or> like, <laughs> yeah. like unfollow the person on social media just for the time being, or like you can hide their posts or whatever. Um, or you like say something like, yeah. Hey, I'm not, um, or, you know, you give them the spiel about like, hey, you know, you don't have to be um, like, you know, given to diet culture. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's super important. And I, I'm wondering how, what would be your advice for someone that, you know, you guys are what four years into recovery, right? And yeah what would be your advice for someone that is like they can't walk away they can't unfollow their family that's in the living room so i mean you're back home with your family like and and they can be family can be really triggering you know what kind of advice would you give to those people those folks do you want to go because you are home with your family <laughs> <laughs> so my family and I have done like a, a great amount of family therapy, which has just been amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And they were very receptive to that and have, um, you know, been um, just wonderful about it. But I do understand that I'm very privileged in that way and that not everybody has, that's not the case for everybody. Um, so I would say maybe like, a healthy boundary, um, you know, like setting healthy boundaries around yeah. uh, your parents, you know, if they're, if they're not going to stop talking about it, at least like tell them not to talk about it around you or, um, you know, or if they're not going to stop dieting, they shouldn't talk about their diet around you uh, mm -hmm. or, um, Yeah. I don't know if that was a good. No, I mean, I think setting boundaries is great. I mean, trying to be vocal about it and letting them know. And I mean, you know, I, I too had a family that was willing to kind of do the work with me. And I knew that I was very lucky to have that family. And it doesn't mean my family was perfect. It just means they were willing to go, oh, okay yeah I got you like that bot you know that triggers you okay okay you know how can we rewind it um but I think yeah it's it's definitely a trying time for folks especially if they're early and trying to figure out this eating disorder recovery path or maybe they come from a family that's not you know that supportive um Sir Beth what are your thoughts um yeah I was definitely thinking along the same lines with Meredith of having those conversations setting those boundaries um, but then also if your family is not supportive, if they really won't respect those boundaries and you're not getting that support at home, um, I know that there's not really a place that you can go outside of your home, um, because we are practicing social distancing. We are being responsible <laughs> in that way. Um, but there are a lot of online supports. Like I know the Alliance is doing, um, those weekly online check-ins. I think they're yeah. weekly. Yeah, yeah we have weekly. them on. Thank you. I was about to plug them, but you just you're welcome. <laughs> Go ahead. No, Mondays and Saturdays are for individuals and then Wednesdays are for friends and families. Um, and all the info is on our, our Facebook page. But yeah, Sarah Beth, you're right. Like we doing as many things as we can right now to support folks. But keep going, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, you're totally fine. But yeah, so supports like that. Um, and then I know that if you want to make like a recovery Instagram, anything like that, if you have one of those, that uh, community can be super supportive. Just um, having that community of other people that you might not know in real life, but that virtual community of other people who are going through the exact same thing you are 
um, has been really supportive to me in the past. Um, so I think just being creative and how you are getting that support um, is really the most we can do right now and probably the most important thing we can do. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And Dawn just commented, opening up the lines of communication with family members to respect what we need in recovery equals very helpful. Yeah. Very wise, yes, Dawn. Dawn. Very wise. Um, <laughs> so how can we, you know, in a time that's so feeling out of control and, you know, so much of our eating disorder can often thrive in that, like, I need to control something. What can we do to, you know, manage, like maybe what are some, some go-to skills that have helped you guys in the past that could probably help somebody right now that's feeling like life is out of control. So what, what maybe some thoughts on skills that have helped you guys or your go-to skills? Yeah. Um, so something um, my therapist told me um, this past week when we were uh, meeting was, um, you know, this is like unprecedented times. Like nobody has ever gone through something like this. Um, nobody that's living right now. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, kind of getting back to the basics is like completely okay. Give yourself grace for, you know, mm -hmm. like if you cannot like, you know, fully, um, if you cannot like work on changing the thoughts right now, at least like combating them. Um, so like, you know, getting back to that like distraction and um, you know, like those DBT skills, um, you know, like if you, if right now is not the time to really go, obviously, yeah. If, if right now is not the time to like go, um, and with changing all those like cognitive things, at least like going back to like, um, like I said, DBT distraction and like um, art and music or journaling. You know? um, so like give yourself grace if that is like what you're really um, leaning on right now. Um, that's like definitely been something that has always been really helpful for me um, just anything like my new hobby um you're like <laughs> make something for my kids <laughs> okay <laughs> um and yeah so um you know kind of what we were talking about earlier with like, um doing that um, kids you mentioned that. <laughs> marjorie <laughs> No, I think distraction is one of the biggest things that we can do right now. And God bless the internet because we have lots at our fingertips that we can use. Um, Sarah Beth, what would be your kind of go-to thoughts? Yeah. Um, I like you said, like, no matter how much relapse prevention you've done and therapy and treatment, anything like that, we've never, they never told us like, okay, when you're faced with a global pandemic, like here's what to do yeah. to stay strong in recovery. Here's relapse prevention in a global pandemic. Yeah. Here's your work. Yes. <laughs> like, here we go. Here's a specific group we have for it. Like we've never had- I don't think Rachel Porter led that group at Carolina House. <laughs> no, Rachel, like maybe get on that one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe add that one in. We need <laughs> to add that one. Treatment, they'll, they'll always be a group on global pandemics. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we're all like very much in uncharted territory, like even people who are pretty far along in recovery feel pretty stable in recovery. Um, it's still like a really weird time for us too. We don't really know what's going on. Um, so definitely distractions have been a big thing for me. Um, because like we said, lots of talk about food and bodies on social media right now. Um, so whether that be getting off social media and if that's triggering me getting off social media and then spending time watching a Netflix show that makes me laugh or yeah. doing art or something like that. Um, and then also I think kind of like what Meredith was talking about, like really diving deep into those DBT skills. Um, one that I've always used a lot is, um, I don't remember like the actual term for it, <laughs> um, but um, like kind of putting those thoughts like on a leaf and like watching it float down the stream and just kind of like being mindful and being like, okay, so I had that thought. That means nothing, but like just going to acknowledge that I had it and then watch it go on by. Um, so I think that's really important right now is to give yourself grace 
if you have those urges and those thoughts, especially, or not especially, but even if you are far along in recovery, if you're like, yo, like I'm six years into this, I haven't had like any disordered thoughts in like X number of years, like where is this coming from? Not getting down on yourself and being like, oh my gosh, I'm relapsing, like I've ruined everything. Like, no, just give yourself grace, acknowledge it for what it is and move forward. Like just do the next right thing. Like you just keep doing what you've been doing. Um, and so like, don't get onto yourself, just acknowledge it and move on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could not agree more. I think so often, oh look, Allison, thanks. DBT skills club. You, mind- <laughs> it was the, the mindfulness realm. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's definitely just, I think people kind of go into this catastrophic thing, have like one disordered thought. They're like, oh my God, like I'm back in my eating disorder. It's like the end of the world. Yeah. And I get that. Like I was there, I owe the shirt, I got you. But yeah. you know, if we can just say, oh, I'm having a lot of thoughts around, well, I don't have to wake up because I don't have a job or school to go to, which means I can sleep in, which means I can miss breakfast. And then like, you're just kind of on that restriction train. And so it's like, we can just catch that and say, okay, I'm having whatever thoughts. Okay. Cool. They're just thoughts. I'm going to let them put them on a leaf, float them in the stream, clouds, you know, whatever. And if we can kind of keep doing that without going down like the dark rabbit hole of I'm just, you know, F it, I'm back in it. Like those are really good. And I, I think too, as much as life is out of our control right now, and there's so much that's so frightening, um, you know, I think that control the things that you can at your house, which is, it might be as simple as, I mean, this is one of the things that, I mean, you guys have probably heard me say this when I come and talk, but like getting rid of, you know, labels in your house, like calorie labels, like blacking them out, like doing little things that can support and honor your recovery um, in, in the ways that you can within your house, putting up positive affirmations everywhere. My favorite thing was, and something that was such a lifesaver to me was 911 cards. And we would, I put them in all over in my PHP apartment and then back at my house, like, okay, here's your go-to skills. So that I, when I was in that place of like panic and so many urges, I can say, okay, I can go sit outside. You know, I can go sit outside. I can go dunk my head in a bowl of ice, you know, whatever it was to kind of help me in that moment. Um, I think so. Last question. I think this is a perfect way to kind of wrap up, but what are y'all's in it's, we know it's a hard time. No, no mind blowing thing there. Um, how, how are you guys finding joy and positivity in this really tough, dark time? Yeah, I think, um, a lot of our influencers, celebrities, stuff like that, they have really like come together and been like, okay, we're going to create content for you. So whether that be like Jimmy Fallon doing the tonight show on YouTube or um, like random celebrities doing Instagram lives together, stuff like that. Like people are really coming together to try to bring as much joy um, for the world as they can Mm -hmm. so really diving deep into that um has been really nice and then also um within the past couple days i've tried to put this pandemic thing on like flip it on its head and be like okay so i'm quarantined but like i can actually make use of this time um so giving myself a lot of grace to watch a lot of netflix and take naps and doing all the things but also take time to okay like I'm going to journal and work through some things that I've really been avoiding this semester in school and stuff like that. So really just viewing this time as um, trying to make it productive for like my personal mental health and things like that. Um, So yeah, just kind of trying to find joy and like the things that I can distract myself with that the world is putting out there with us or taking my puppy on walks. We get to go on a lot more walks right now um, because I have nowhere to go. Um, and just like hanging out with my roommate and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of little things that I didn't have time for um, this semester, um, but now I have nowhere to go. So I got a lot of time. <laughs> How about you, Mary? Um, just a side note, um, Sarah asked about a 911 card and I was just cleaning out my desk, a little quarantine activity, and I found my <laughs> card earlier and I 
It's right here. Um, mine is a little oh, yeah, yeah. unconventional. And of course, it's like a scrapbook cute 911 card. They're, oh, yeah. Mine are in my um, six of them. But book. They're so cute. <laughs> so I just have like little quotes and like things that were helpful to me. And I had it on my keychain um, with my keys on it. And so it basically went up wherever with me. And um, yeah. So just wanted to let her know that, um, but I do think well, so. Mine was like a plain index card with like my favorite skills of like rap. Yeah, that's just true. Yeah, Lisa, we, we made them in Carolina house. Me and Meredith made them together. Um, so I, like McCall said, like you can just do it on an index card and like write down DBT skills that you know are helpful. Um, so I had specific ones. Like I had one that was specifically for meal time. So I had some DBT skills I found helpful. And then on the back, I put some quotes that I felt inspired by. So like really anything that you feel like is helpful, put on your 911 card. There's no specific way to do it. Um, it's mm -hmm. just for you and helping yourself in those moments. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, back to you, Meredith. <laughs> um, finding joy in the little things like Sarah Beth was saying, um, I, um, have two dogs and so I've been like taking them on walks. Um, and then, um, I live in a neighborhood and the kids, um, have started chalking on the sidewalk. Um, just like really like you're unique and you got this and just like really sweet things. Um, and so, yeah, I really feel like this entire process will, um, make me start to appreciate the little things. I think um, I will be the first to admit when I'm in school, I am just like on, um, I don't appreciate the little things when I'm in school. I just, you know, every day I'm just class and work and, you know, nothing else matters. And, um, and so just like really appreciating um, like, if I see a funny video on like TikTok, um, yeah, and then, like Sarah about the saying, um, like Jim from the did the like some good news, um, little bit, and that was really funny. And, um, I like have my windows open, and um, we have like three little boys who live next door to us, and so just like hearing them laughing and giggling, like, um, so just really like taking in everything around me, um. And, um, you know, like something that is like kind of small, but like lighting a candle that I like, yeah. that smells really good. And um, so, yeah, just like, um, yeah, the, the little things, I, um, it's kind of what we have to have to find joy in. And then I think another thing, if something that, um, if you like get joy from like, you know, helping others or, um, mm -hmm. like whether that be like, you know, texting them or writing them a letter. Um, that's something that I think could be, um, you know, really helpful. Um, and also helpful for both parties, you know, like yeah. the person you're reaching out to and yourself. So, um, I, I mean, I think that's like the consistent theme, right? And the silver lining is the simplicity and the joy that we're finding in the simplicity. And yay, DB, it's be really hard because if you're in recovery or struggling with your eating disorder, it can be really, really isolating. And, um, but you're not alone. I mean, I think that's the really cool thing that has come out of this is that we have so much virtual support. So like you mentioned, our, our virtual check-ins. And, and so many ways for us to know that we're not alone and that we can show up broken and we can show up and find joy together in the really little things like sidewalk chalk. And, you know, I know being at home with my kids all the time is not the easiest thing. I can hear Marjorie screaming in the background about bedtime. Um, but then again, <laughs> it's like, the other day they were playing in the sprinkler in the front yard because the sprinkler automatically came on and I just kind of sat there and I was like, God, this is awesome. And it's not that we would never have played in the sprinkler, but it was, would we have ever slowed down enough to just be randomly in the front yard, you know? So 
I think it is, you know, if we can just keep finding joy, and this is what I've always said, and I, I, you know, going through everything with Marjorie and my eating disorder and all the ups and downs of life, I, there has been a consistent theme that I've journaled throughout this, and it's finding those silver linings. And it doesn't have to be this monumental, you know, thing that, you know, a big front yard or, you know, all of a sudden your, you know, publisher's clearinghouse comes and you're given thousands of dollars. I mean, that would be great. But it can be little things. It can be the sidewalk chalk. It can be the boys next door hearing them laugh. It can see my kids, you know, running in the sprinklers. The joy that's going to come right now for me, though, personally, is that Jordan is putting that little monster to bed and I don't have to. So we're going to stay on a couple more minutes. Um, <laughs> but no, but I mean, I, I seriously think, and you know, reasons I was so excited to do this with you two tonight is I think that you both are such beautiful examples of finding joy in really shitty times and the way that you carry yourselves and spread that message of hope and also holding that space. It's not just spreading like sunshine everywhere, right? It's also holding that space and saying like, yeah, this sucks and we're just going to sit and do it together. Um, I, I think that's so amazing. So I would really love to end this night with Sarah Best Puppy. Okay, I'll go get her. <laughs> you can go get her. Um, okay. <laughs> Meredith, explain the cuteness that is Sarah Best Puppy. So Winnie is a golden doodle. Um, How old is she now? When did she get her? Um, it's like a, less than a month, right? I feel like she's a puppy. We should wait for Sarah to answer that question because I'm so, really so this is gonna be if you haven't found joy today, meet Winnie. This is Winnie. Winnie. Joy. <laughs> I just want to she eat is three her. months old. Three. Um oh. she is the sweetest little thing. She's also a body monster. Um <laughs> She's been in my room barking this whole time. I gave her some treats and was like, "Hey, have fun. Um, I so think she's very happy to be out. In me, my okay, now we're going to have oh Lucy. God. I was going to see if Lucy was nearby. Right? It's Lucy, right? It's Lucy, yeah. She um, she loves all the attention. So she she couldn't get it. <laughs> she knew the, the puppies were on Facebook Live. She, she couldn't miss it. Oh, there you go. Well, I can't think of a better way to when we've been talking about silver linings and disappointment, you know, and you guys, I want to get from Alliance and our team and me personally, because I love you two so much. Congratulations on graduating college and rocking out recovery. I mean, I am I am so proud of you and we are so proud of you and um, we are celebrating you from afar. And thank you. Um, Love you guys both so much. Love those cute puppies. And thank you for spending the night with us tonight and helping so many. Thank you for, yeah, having, thanks for having us. This was so fun. It was so fun. So we're going to sign off and we will see everyone soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>